Hey everybody, um, I am Clarissa the Boss Queen. In this video today, I'm going to be showing you guys how I groom my dog. I did a video like this a while back, but I was kind of displeased with it. I took it down, so I think now I'm getting a lot better with doing my videos, with doing voiceovers. So this um video is a just a just a recap from an old video. Um, so a better upgraded version. All right. So these are the items I'm going to be using um in the grooming process for my dog today all right so today i'm going to be using the clippers and everything i'm going to be using um the doggy shampoo i purchased that from walmart i think i purchased the clippers from walmart also there are some flea wipes that i'm going to be using um not purposely just for it to wipe his eyes i'm, I'm gonna show you guys demonstrate in the video how i use those wipes for his eyes um that shampoo is really good it's a really good shampoo um for my dog because i have a terrier a yorkshire terrier i use the training pads um for when i trim his hair and the hair falls instead of the hair falling just anywhere it falls on that pad and all i have to do is get is throw the pad away and you i would demonstrate all of this all of these things that i'm telling you in the video so those are the training pads i really like those because they're black and you know black is my favorite color also um they just look better than the doggy training pad pads that's blue um and those are some um toe i mean some nail clippers uh for the dog so um we're going to be clipping his nails today too as well in the video so i will be showing you guys that and you're going to need some special doggy uh clip uh scissors that i use i use those scissors they're specifically for cutting fur off of um the dog and then those flea wipes like i said what i do is i like to take those wipes and wipe around his eyes but even though it, it has a flea medication on those wipes so what i like to do is let it uh dissolve in the water for a while to let that medication get off and then I use it to clean the crust around his eyes. Also, these are some um, clippers that I purchased at Walmart. I just found out after I purchased these clippers, they have doggy clippers <laughs> for dogs. Like if you're in the grooming your dog. So I'm going to go to Walmart um, one day here soon and buy the doggy clippers. I saw them the last time I was in Walmart. So I was kind of like, wow, I didn't even know they had the doggy clippers but those are just the regular clippers you use for cutting um, your hair. So I have been watching other uh, YouTube videos and I, and I got inspired. The reason why I started grooming my dog was because back in COVID, a lot of um, grooming places didn't have enough groomers because that back then at that time, um, nobody really wanted to work because of all the, the COVID situation things and the unemployment. So, um, the place that I was taking my dog to get groomed at, um, they had closed down because of lack of workers. And so I had to make myself really, um, train myself to learn how to groom my, my dog. And I had watched some YouTube videos. I got inspired and I got the knowledge that I needed to do the best of my ability to groom my dog. And so I used it and now I'm actually saving myself a lot of money anyway. Um, because every time I took him to the groomer, that was about 50 or $60 a visit. So, I mean, that's saving those 50 or $60 in my pocket. Now this is my dog Shango. Um, he's a small Yorkie. He actually looks a little thick and bigger in the um, camera, but he is a good dog. Um, he's a little Yorkshire Terrier. Uh, right now he's four years old and he has a good coat of, of fur. Um, his coat can get very thick. If I don't keep it up, it will get so thick. Uh, I don't let his hair get matted. I'm always, um, you know, making sure that he's get groomed at least once every two weeks. Um, I clip his nails like maybe once a month because his nails don't need to be clipped all the time. Um, but he does really good with the grooming process. He sits still. He's very patient. He's, he's a good dog. He doesn't give me any problems. Um, he's a blessing. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot to going into taking care of a Yorkie. They're very, um, 
you know, dainty dogs. They're high maintenance. Um, and you have to have patience with them. Um, if you don't have patience, you do not need an animal. So, um, yeah, but this I'm going to show you now. What I'm going to be doing now is I think I'm going to be using the clippers. I'm getting the clippers together to um, trim his hair down. Um, I found out that it's easier when I was watching other, uh, educating myself while watching other YouTube videos. It's easier to use the clippers to go ahead and trim as most of the hair down. And then whatever that I see after I use the clippers, I'll take the scissors and just cut myself. But the, the clippers really help out because especially if your dog have a thick coat of fur um, on him or her, um, it's best to use the clippers first to kind of get as much as that hair down as possible. So my Yorkie, he's he has a little mixture of all kind of little colors. So what I like to do is take the clipper and um, go in the direction opposite of how his hair is. So I just um, take the clippers and go up, and I and I and I purposely move the his fur um, up way so it makes it easier to use the clippers to cut the hair. So, <clears throat> and I'm going to do this for, um, I'm going to do this on, right now I'm doing one side and then once I finish like the middle and the other side, um, I will do, be working on the next side as well. I try to get as much in the back, uh, as I can because he, he likes to sit down. <laughs> so I had to hurry up and try to do as much back there before he. Now, I think right there, uh, he had like some hair that was matted right there. So I had to take the scissors, those special types of scissors. Um, if you just use regular scissors on your um, dog, it's not going to work. Those scissors that I brought, I think I brought them at the pet store or Walmart. You have to get the scissors that is fit for cutting fur on an animal because if you use the regular scissors and I have tried it when I use the regular cutting scissors they just did not work well on cutting my dog's hair okay so now you see why I put the puppy pad down I got the puppy pad um on there because what that does it helped the when I use the clippers his fur just immediately goes on the puppy pad and that way it makes it an easy cleanup and i'll show you in the video how easy it is so that way the fur doesn't get all over the table it you know you can just clean it up just get the um puppy pad up with the fur on it and just throw it in the trash that way is you know you'll see in the video um later on i'll show you how i did it and now i'm taking a comb and just kind of combing the excess uh fur off that you know and now i'm taking the, the clippers to clip any kind of um hair balls any kind of fur balls that he has uh because you can't not the clippers the, the scissors because you can't use the clippers to do it so you have to take the scissors so now i'm taking those special scissors that is used for animals like if they have fur dogs and taking it and cutting the um that off of there the matted hair that's what i meant to say the matted hair cutting the matted hair see those scissors work great on hair you know for a dog like i mean the fur and he's sitting down being very patient so whatever i couldn't get with the clippers like i said i'll take it use it with the scissors and i think i found a piece of matted hair and the top of his head area so I had to take the um, scissors and cut it because sometimes those clippers, they don't do, you know, that was some matted hair that I had found. The clippers is just for trimming down, you know, that's about it. And then whatever else you might see, I take the, um, the scissors and do it. I'm not a professional. I have, I'm going to go ahead and do a disclaimer. I am not a professional groomer. <laughs> I do this only for my dog. I do not, <laughs> would not groom any other dog. <laughs> so, um, just, just my dog and, you know, during COVID, 
had to, you know, it messed up a lot for grooming. So I had to make train myself to groom him. And I'm actually getting better and better at it every time I, you know, groom him. So, um, I'm just, you know, it was a, it was a learning process. It took me a while. It, it took me, it took me a little while to like really get somewhat good at it. I want to say about a year or so. It took me about a year. And then I stopped being lazy and just went ahead and brought the, the, the items that I need to groom him, you know, well, instead of just being cheap and just using the regular scissors, I went ahead and bought the, the cutting scissors for, for fur, for animals. And, you know, just, just started. And I brought the clippers because I didn't have clippers at first. So when I watched one of the, um, videos on YouTube on how to groom a Yorkie and the first thing that the groomer had was some clippers. And I said, Oh, that's why I, I, that's what I've been missing with, um, grooming. And it makes it a lot, the clippers make it so much easier. Um, you know, so I'm just glad that I educated myself on that. And that way, maybe if you didn't know how to groom your dog, whether it's a terrier or some other breed, by watching this video, you kind of get an idea at how to, you know, do it. See, um, right here, you may not can see right now, but he has the crust. A lot of um, Yorkshire Terriers, they have a crust in, in between their eyes. And that's another thing um, on a weekly basis. I have to make sure I clean his around his eye area for to remove all that crust from his eyes. Because um, if not, it, 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 it'll get really, really hard and it'll be hard to remove. And then you have to end up sometimes... If I wait too long to remove it from his eyes, I have to end up using the scissors and cutting that crust off from away um, from his eye area. So I try to stay on it with keeping it maintained with um, no crust around his eye area because it's it'll get very hard. So now I'm just using a comb and just combing any excess uh, fur from him. And he's such a good dog. He still. Then I trim the top of his head. Um, I normally like to leave a little bit of hair at the top um, of his head because that it just looks a lot better. I kind of trim it a little bit. Normally, when I used to take him to the groomer, they would cut his hair too much and he wouldn't look right. <laughs> so I used to get mad sometimes when I used to cut his hair too, too low, uh, especially in the wintertime because I want him to have a little bit of a hair to keep them a little warm during the winter but in the summer maybe you know a lot shorter so i kind of like grooming him to the best of my ability because i i'm satisfied at how he looks when i groom him like i said a lot of times when i used to take him to the groomer they would just cut his hair too short it, i was i used to get mad i used to be like and i would tell them when i bring him in please don't cut his fur too short and they do it anyway. <laughs> and, oh, I used to get so mad. So now I think I'm just um, cutting the, um, around his nose area. Seeing some hair growing out a little bit. And around his eye. Um, I always have to make sure around his eye area that I cut any kind of, um, outgrown hair that prevents him from seeing so I make sure that I cut around his eye area any kind of long hairs um so that he can be able to see so that it won't cover his eyes I want him to be able to see his eyes because he has the most beautiful eyes um that's what makes him look so adorable is his eyes And see all the fur goes on the um the puppy pad. I think I purchased these puppy pads at Walmart, and I'm glad that they're black. Um, so that you know I I like that. And most of them are like blue, but I like the I like these. I I think I'll purchase these again. And it's I was trying I think right here I was trying to lay him on his back because sometimes in his stomach area. 
he has some matted hair on his stomach area just just a little bit not a lot but he wouldn't do that so i think he's so smart i think because he know that um he was being filmed <laughs> recorded or whatever but i think too the table was kind of hard like if he was laying on the bed he would roll over on his back and want me to rub his belly so i would just sneak and take the scissors and just cut the matted hair from his belly area so um i did that off camera because he really wasn't like trying to lay flat on the hard surface on the table so i just you know did that so sometimes when i see matted hair i immediately go ahead and get the scissors and cut the matted hair off right away before it becomes a problem uh, a lot of times when his hair is longer than what it needs to be uh when he scratches himself his nail will get uh caught in the hair so that's why another reason too I make sure I trim his hair down as much as possible so that his nail, you know, sometimes won't get, won't get stuck in his fur. And also too, I try to keep his nails trimmed as much as possible so that, um, they won't be too long and, um, so that he won't get, you know, his nail, um, stuck into, um, the fur. I think what I was trying to do, I didn't realize how how i had my camera angled um i think i got it angled too low so i think i was just trying to show y'all him but now i'm just doing a little quick cleanup um just cleaning off the um clippers using that little brush that came with the clippers just kind of cleaning all the extra fur onto that puppy pad so it makes it an easy cleanup And as you see how easy it, it cleans up, you just take it, roll it, make sure that the fur doesn't get out of, well, a few pieces got out. And you just take it and throw it away, throw it away in the trash. What an easy cleanup. That way you don't have to be trying to pick up fur forever in a day with your hands or anything like that. Very easy cleanup. Now I'm taking disinfectant wipes and I'm cleaning the area, the space. Um, I'm going to be also disinfecting the um clippers and um anything that i used on him i'm going to take that disinfectant wipe and disinfect those items um right now i'm just taking i'm disinfecting the clippers disinfecting the um the comb and everything like that Anything that I used, I disinfect it and throw it away. And I'm taking a disinfecting wipe. And I am cleaning the table off. Now I'm about to clip his nails. These are toenail clippers that I bought from um, the pet store. And they look like this. I paid $6.99 for them. And they give you the instructions on the back on how to properly uh, cut your pet's nails. So I always keep it in the package because they're so small. I just don't want to lose them. So, And they look like that. I should have did this earlier or immediately after I, I cut his fur, but I had almost forgot. And then when I thought about it, I had to whip out another puppy pad so that it could collect the um, clippings of his nails. And also, 
I have to take those scissors and cut some of the fur from his paws so that I could see his nails. And you'll see here in a minute. I'm, I like that because I'm also able to turn them around. Okay, so now you see um, he has fur that grows around his nails. So what I'm going to do now is clip all the fur away from his nail area so I can see uh, his nails. Because with all that hair, I could not see. So I had to take those special scissors and cut all that hair off. I mean fur. And it makes it a lot easier for the nail clipping. If you do this, if you do this step, it makes it a lot easier to clip his nails. And I do this for the front paws and I also do it for his back paws as well. And I'm just cutting the end and I'm holding his, try to hold his nail down as much as possible so that um, you're not, you know, hurting his little nail area. And you just only want to clip the ends of the nail. You don't want to go real deep. Um, you're just clipping the ends and that's it. As you can see how far I, I went. And I used to be fearful to cut his nails. That's why a lot of times I used to take him to the groomer because I used to think that I couldn't, you know, clip his nails. I was always scared to do it. But like I said, during the pandemic, I was forced <laughs> to learn um, how to do these things because uh, um, the groomer, the grooming place I was taking him to, they had closed down. They shut down. They 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 went out of business and everything because they didn't have enough groomers. So they just closed down. Um. So after that, I I just, you know, I had to learn how to do all this stuff. So I'm doing the same thing on on from the other paw. I clipped all his hair off, and so also that hair just went right on the puppy bed. <laughs> And then I, then I trim any excess hair that I see that's long. I go ahead and trim it off. And as you can see, trimming it, trimming that fur at, at first before you clip. And you want to do that. I mean, if you have a, a terrier or any kind of dog that has fur that grows around a paw, you want to clip that the fur first and then cut their nails i think that one wasn't that long so i didn't bother with it um i think i just went on ahead and did the, the other nail and you see as i'm i'm holding it a little bit giving it some some, some support and i'm just clipping the end the ends of it there we go And I do his grooming, uh, give him a bath like once every two weeks. Okay. Um, this is the shampoo that I use. That's him barking in the background. <laughs> um, so what I'd like to do is run the bath water. I put the um some of the shampoo in there and the in his bath water to make it, you know, bubble. And then I'm going to use this kneeling pad because when I give him a bath, I'm on my um, knees and sometimes I need to put a towel down or, or I'll use this kneeling pad. It actually worked pretty good, uh, you know, so I won't, you know, mess up my knees. Just put my knees on something, a surface that's kind of soft. So I bought that at Dollar Tree for $1.25 because they're not a dollar no more, $1.25. And I also have a cup to use for 
when I'm uh, rinsing him off, rinsing the soap off when I'm giving him um, his bath. All right. So I, I kind of let the water fill up somewhat. Now you'll see fur all on my shirt, on my, on my black shirt, because that fur gets everywhere. I'm telling you, it gets everywhere, all, all, all over the place. So now I'm just going to take the cup and wet them first. So that cup helps me um, get them wet. I kind of get them started with, with that. Uh, he's good when it comes to taking a bath as well. He first He's kind of scary at first, but he likes it now. So I put the shampoo on him. I, li I actually love the shampoo. It gives him a nice shiny coat once he's dry. Um, from a bath, it gives him a nice coat. And I think I got that at Walmart. So now I'm just going and washing his whole body. Um, I normally wash him about two times, at least. Sometimes about, about two times. Because I feel like one time washing him with this with this, uh, shampoo is not enough. So I, I'll go ahead and wash him a second time sometimes. And then now I'm going to take the flea wipe. And what I'd like to do, I'm going to take one and I'm going to submerge it in the water to get that medication off of it so I can wipe his eyes. And as you can see, I'm submerging it in the water to get that medication off of there. It's just using it as a wipe, just a wipe to get the crust around. And you'll see how much crust gets off his eyes when I do this. It really works, so I do it like this all the time. With the getting the crust around his eyes, the secret is to, cause, so like I said, that crust will dry. The secret you have to get it like wet, so that it can loosen up from away from his eye area. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just like wiping and gently, just gently wiping around his eye area, removing that that crust around his eyes. And the only way that the crust is easy to remove is when it is wet. So you would have to, you know, give your dog a bath or get a like use like a wipe or a towel and just kind of wipe around his eyes. I have to do this at least once a week with wiping around his eyes, like I said. And now, as you can see, uh, there's some crust that came off on the, the wipe, but most of it went into the, the bath water. So whatever you don't see, whatever you didn't see on that wipe, it just kind of fell into the bath water because he had a lot of crust around both of his eyes. And so now I think I'm going back in and giving him another good wash one last time. I always give him two washes. I'm loving my new ring light. It, I'm glad I invested in getting a better one, an upgraded one. It actually gives um, the, my videos a better quality. So I'm finally bossed up and got me a better ring light, even though it was it was $50, but um, it, it was worth it. So I'm, I'm loving this ring light. If you want to know what ring light I'm using, you can go back and watch my video that I was, um, that I uploaded about, um the ring light and um so you can go back and watch that video all right so now i took them out and this is how i dry them off i let my dog air dry i do not use the blow dryer i don't have time for all that sometimes so i just make sure that i place a towel down on the floor and then i take another towel and just dry him off because that way it keeps your floor dry um because normally when you straight take them out the tub they're wet and they will get your floor all wet. So this helps prevent from keeping your floor so wet. And just place a towel down and then use a towel. So I'm just drying them off to the best of my ability. Best that I can. And then he's going to shake it off anyway. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Okay, so after I'm finished, I'm going to go in with that bleach cleaner and clean the tub out so i just take the bleach cleaner and you see how the crust that's the crust from his eyes 
in dirt or whatever. And so I'm just going to take the bleach cleaner and spray it in the tub. That's how I clean and disinfect my tub with bleach. <laughs> with bleach after I clean my dog. Now this bleach cleaner I bought at Walmart for a dollar. It was like 98 cents. It is good and it is very strong. Um, even though it was a dollar, it it I mean it you can smell the bleach. I mean it is very strong. So I use it to clean out the tub every time after I give my dog a bath. And even before I give my dog a bath, I clean the tub out um, with that cleaner. All right, so that's the bleach cleaner. Go. This is Shango after he has been air dried and stuff. He's happy now. And his face looks so much better. The crust around his eyes is gone. Um, normally, after I give him a bath, I should have took a comb or a brush and just kind of brush his hair. But it wasn't too bad. So, But he looks so much better with the uh, crust away from his eyes it looks like i may need to clip some more around his eyes um i think i probably did that off camera but he looks so cute he's my little my little teddy bear he looks like a little cute little teddy bear <laughs> so he's just happy and sleepy now um after a bath he's normally sleepy so he just looks sleepy <laughs> but he's satisfied he's happy he looks so much better i, I trimmed him the best the, the best way I could and he looks a lot better. He looks clean and smells good. He's such a good dog. He really is. <laughs> he wants his belly rub now. When he does that, he wants his belly rub, so <laughs> Yeah. I think he's satisfied. All right, now I'm going to put him on his little outfit so I can take him for his midday walk. Um, that tie, I when I used to take him to the groomer, um, they used to give him a tie every time after his visit. So I just kept I just kept it, kept a couple of the ties that they um, gave him. And his little doggy outfit, I got that from Walmart. It's a little sweater. And I think it was kind of cold outside that day, so um, I put a out. When it's cold outside, really, really cold, I always put him on a sweater or some kind of little doggy outfit, you know, so he can be kind of warm, try to be a little warm when he's outside. All right, so now I'm going to be putting his um, sweater outfit on, or sweater. <laughs> I like that little sweater. It's cute. I forgot how much I paid for it, though. Um, I forgot. I don't want to say... Ooh, look at his paws. They look so cute and trimmed. I did a pretty good job, I think. All right, so I should have had the camera angled up a little more, but I didn't realize that after I recorded the video that I had the camera, like, down more, but I guess it's okay. You get the idea. You see that I'm just putting on his um sweater. That's all. So now I'm putting the, the bow tie on him, which is so easy to put on. I should have brought him more um, up to the camera more. I tried, but I, I thought that I had it angled correctly. So I was trying to stand him up, but I realized that I had the camera too in the wrong angle. So yeah. 
There he is, all suited up. <laughs> yep, he got his bow tie on and his sweater. He's trying to get what it looked like in the back. <laughs> he looks so cute. I was trying to get him to look up at the camera and he wouldn't. <laughs> he would not look. <laughs> there we go. I angled it. Let's see, finally I angled it. Now you can see him. He's still not looking. <laughs> he still wasn't trying to look. I'm like, Mom, stop. <laughs> oh, he looks so cute. He would not look in that camera for that. And you know, now that I think about it, I think because I had the ring light on and it was probably, the lightning was probably too bright. Okay, now we're outside for his midday walk after his shower. Look at, look at, look at. <laughs> Shango is on his midday walk. And this is after his bath and his, all of his grooming, you know, he loves to walk. So I have to walk him outside in the daytime, a midday, and then I'll walk him once again at night. He's doing his little business. <laughs> and that's his little bag over there that I put him in to um, bring him outside. But yeah, he's on his little mission for his little walk. Shango, look this way. Shango gets kind of hard-headed when he comes outside. I don't know what it is about outside. He just act like he just can't hear me. <laughs> but he is well-trained. Uh, what I can say about terriers, like, they're easy to train. So, like, potty train. So, um, he's real good about not pooping or nothing or peeing in the house he doesn't use the bathroom in the house he always um do, does that when i bring him outside so he's good about that there you go again <laughs> come on shango look this way shango shango he's trying to ignore me because he know i got the phone and recording he's smart he's so smart <laughs> shango but yeah, he likes long walks, so <laughs> Shango. And I thought I had took his little clothes off, but I guess I had left him on. But he got his little tie on, he got his little sweater on. Because we're outside and it's it's a little chilly. So yeah, there he go. He might go back in his little thing that's over there. So he's walking towards it. But once he goes back inside of there, that, that indicates to let me know that he's finished doing his business. But I think he's going to snoop, snoop around some more and, uh, you know, claim his territory and all that good stuff. So, <laughs> that's why I say you got to have patience with a dog, period, whether it's a terrier or any kind of other breed. Um, if you don't have the patience, then you don't need a dog because it does take patience and time. Um, having a dog, especially a terrier, a Yorkshire terrier, but I love my little Yorkie, so, but yeah, this is him, this is Shango, doing what he do best, <laughs> he's gonna have a long walk, so, I'm gonna end this video, because we're gonna be walking for a little bit more, min a few more minutes, and um, I will see you in the next one. All right, bye. Shingo. Let me see if Shingo will look my way. He, he's so...
into what he is trying to claim his territory. He ain't stunned me. Shango. Shango. Shango, look. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>